I was slain long ago by a woman named Seros. This world, too, will be liberated. The King of Liberation, Nemesis, is our newest Grand Hero battle unit. He certainly has some interesting traits, and we'll be talking about those throughout the video. First off, Nemesis is a Sword of Retreat unit, which is probably our most crowded group of heroes. He will immediately differentiate himself from the crowd with his stats though. Nemesis will have 43 HP, 39 attack, 23 speed, 37 defense, and 34 resistance. The man is basically an army unit with 2 movement, and that new generation BST is just going to reinforce that. Nemesis may be super slow, but 39 attack is very high, and that's paired with 37 defense and 34 resistance, which is just an absurdly good defensive stat line. While the guy is going to get doubled by nearly every enemy, he does have some countermeasures thanks to his unique weapon. Nemesis will indeed bring his Dark Creator Sword, and it's quite the weapon. First off, it grants a flat plus 3 defense, so Nemesis will sit at 40 defense naturally. It then comes with two separate effects. First, during combat, boost attack and defense equal to the number of allies with HP greater than or equal to 90% times 2. This has a max of plus 6, which would equal 3 healthy allies. For the second portion, during Nemesis' first combat in player phase or enemy phase, reduce damage from attacks during combat and from area effect specials by percentage equal to number of allies with HP greater than or equal to 90% times 15. This has a maximum of 45% damage reduction, which once again requires 3 healthy allies. Good lord, so Nemesis is not going to be left out on the percent based damage reduction ability this year. 45% is a lot, but the conditions are quite different from anything else we've seen. Not only does the damage reduction only work for the first fight in a player or enemy phase, but it needs 3 teammates at near full HP. Let's be honest, 90% or higher is not much of a margin, so basically if someone gets hurt, they will almost always dip under 90% and Nemesis is going to lose one stack toward Dark Creator Swords 2 abilities. If you can keep at least 2 healthy allies, then 30% damage reduction ain't bad, but if you drop to 15%, then that's not as notable. This also applies to attack and defense stat boost, but you can always be active for multiple rounds of combat, and Nemesis is going to want those extra stats if he has to fight 2 or more times per phase. So overall, in the ideal conditions, Dark Creator Sword is pretty dang good. Plus 6 attack is going to get Nemesis to 61 attack total, and the plus 6 defense on top of the plus 3 flat defense boost is going to get him to 46 defense just from the weapon alone. Then for the first fight per player phase or enemy phase, Nemesis can get 45% damage reduction, and unlike Flame's Caduceus Staff, he can also reduce the damage of AoE specials. This is one tanky boy, even if Nemesis has to take 2 attacks, and he will deal very respectable counterattack damage. The main issue with Dark Creator Sword is the activation condition. Keep in mind that this weapon has no range requirement or HP requirement for Nemesis himself, so Nemesis can be across the map on low HP, and he can still get all these benefits. The issue is keeping a full team healthy, and that can be problematic in things like longer PvE maps with reinforcements, and then Aether raids. For one, if Savage Blow gets applied to Nemesis' team, then they most likely drop under 90% HP. For example, a unit with 60 HP needs 54 HP to be at 90% or higher. Savage Blow deals 7 damage, so even a 60 HP unit already drops under the threshold. PvE maps love to throw in that one cheeky unit with Savage Blow, and just in general, most maps with reinforcements will see multiple units fighting at once. Since you only get 4 total units, running a Fury or Desperation user is probably not great, and even a second tank alongside Nemesis has to stay over 90% HP, which isn't exactly as easy as say something like 50% HP. Perhaps Nemesis could be decent for Grand Conquest maps since you have 8 units on the field and you do have full HP allies reinforcements that can spawn in. For Aether Raids, you also have one extra ally to work with, but a Bolt Tower can mess you up, and the part where the damage reduction ability only works once per phase can be discouraging compared to someone like Brave Ike, who's just gonna tank and smank every person he fights. In a sense, you have to treat the damage reduction effect kinda like guard bearing, although it can work on the player phase too, which is really positive. It would seem like Dark Creator Sword should shine on PvE maps without insane reinforcements, and then in Arena, where it's a bit more manageable to bait one enemy at a time, and keep most of your team at full HP. Dark Creator Sword is definitely the standout perk for Nemesis as a unit since his other skills are okay but nothing special. He has Dragon Fang which is fine with his high attack but for cooldown is quite high. Chill Attack would debuff the highest attack enemy which is also good but the B slot is very valuable for other skills. Savage Blow is not bad either because Nemesis can initiate combat and possibly survive thanks to Dark Creator's Sword's damage reduction and his insanely high defense and res. These skills are fine but there are a ton of other options. 
For merging purposes, Nemesis sadly does not have any super boons. If you don't want to spend trade fruits, then a neutral nature will give him plus 1 HP, attack, and defense, and that's all very respectable to keep. I think a res boon is a solid choice too to balance out his defensive stance, but more attack or defense is also good. Really no need to worry here, there's just so many stats on this guy besides speed. At plus 10 mergers, a fully built nemesis is going to be a beast and he would benefit well from summoner supports, extra plus 5 HP, since with 45% damage reduction, any point of HP just becomes that much more valuable. Despite having a really unique stat line among Sword of Tree units, Nemesis has some competition with this year's free to play options. Spring Bartra is his closest comparison stat wise, with Nemesis coming out with a bunch more resistance and a bit more defense. He also gets a little extra stat points thanks to Gen 5 BST. Another good comparison is Itsuki, who is more of a balanced unit but still has good defense and res for a sword user. Itsuki has more flexible builds since you can invest in his speed stat. His Mirage Falchion also grants bonus attack and defense, so it's not too far off from Dark Creator's sword. Itsuki does have his own unique condition to play around to get the full value out of his weapon, but it does also have dragon effectiveness, and that's a pretty nice perk to have. If you don't care about speed, the Nemesis is a clear choice here, and he also is cheaper to plus 10 in the long run since he is a grand hero battle unit. Spring Bartra is fun if you just want to mess around with an inheritable weapon or a high HP build, and Itsuki is still a solid sword unit with some nice utility. If you prefer a faster free to play option, Ashram from last year is great still, and Mercurius is a really simple weapon to play around with team support. With 45% damage reduction on a weapon, there's no doubt that Nemesis can carve out his own little niche in this very saturated unit group. For fun, here's a look at the other slowest sword infantry units. Nemesis is only faster than Summer Hell Bindi, but he is just as tanky too, so yeah. There really aren't many slow sword users to begin with, but if you look at the Gen 1 guys like Hinata or Selif, Nemesis has nearly 20 more BST than them. Tobin is a free to play option that's on the slower side, but if you want a more recent choice, then I would say most people are going to just go with Itsuki. Now, I will give special mention to Selif again because of the new refined Divine Tear thing. It gives up to plus 10 attack and defense while also reducing the first mage attack by 50%, so that's something worth mentioning, especially since Dark Creator Sword has its own damage reduction ability. I would say Divine Tear thing is definitely a weapon that requires less thinking to get the full value out of it. For builds, the classic answer to slow units is to just slap on quick repose. Getting that guaranteed follow up attack gives much more kill potential, which is pretty important in Fey. And Nemesis has a real shot at staying above the 70% HP threshold since he can reduce 45% of the damage taken. A normal tank setup will work just fine since stat wise Nemesis is solid. Things like stance skills or bond skills and nice A skills are sacred skill options. And of course, you can go with close or distant defense. For Nemesis, I think he could get away with brazen skills due to the damage reduction ability and the new brazen defense and Red Seal would be really good for stalling out fights. The attack and defense solo seal is also great because again, Dark Creator Sword has no range requirement. Nemesis can utilize solo skills or bond skills just fine. If you want some simple options, Death Blow, Guard, and Attack Smoke are great budget skills. Then for specials, you probably want to go with Bonfire or Ignis, unless you fully stack attack. Nemesis is going to build like most other slow tanks, but it's really up to how he uses allies to keep Dark Creator Sword at full power. Again, if you're using a Fury plus Desperation user to sweep enemies, then that's already one less stack for Dark Creator Sword. If a teammate fights first and gets hurt, then they could also lose Nemesis' stack. Perhaps if you bring a healer or one of the Heron Dancers, then you can recover enough HP, but it's all up to circumstances. For the more premium defensive builds, you can definitely go with a distant counter set. DC plus Quick Repose is fine, or you can swap in low attack and defense while using the Quick Repose Sacred Seal. Even without the damage reduction, this guy is going to be able to tank a lot of hits, but he will get hit often, and that can leave him vulnerable to special procs. A tier 3 dual stance like Sturdy Stance 3 or Mirror Stance 3 would be valuable just for the guard effect. Now, I do think Nemesis can use a variation of the usual distant counter setup by taking inspiration from Sothis. If we're worried about taking a second enemy attack, why not just one-shot them on the counterattack? With Wrath 3 and Times Pulse, Nemesis could get a 2 cooldown special down to 1 cooldown, which would let him retaliate with a Moonbow or Glimmer after he gets hit. If he takes big damage, then Wrath 3 adds 10 extra damage on top. Additionally, on the next player phase, Wrath and Times Pulse both activate to fully recharge that 2 cooldown special so Nemesis can now initiate with it. The King of Liberation doesn't want to fight multiple times per phase anyway, so I think this is a valid option. If you want something a bit simpler, he can steal Edelgard's solo type build, attack and defense solo and rouse attack and defense on top of Dark Creator Sword's attack and defense boost would be kinda scary to face. 
Last, if you just want to take advantage of Nemesis' 6 stat line, then he could borrow Spring Bartry's Carrot Cutter Plus. That sword grants bonus attack and defense when near allies, and it negates attack and defense debuffs, so it's not a bad replacement if you don't want to worry about the whole 90% HP ally condition. Nemesis can also use the other defensive swords like Barrier Blade, Safeguard, or the Pledged Blade Plus. Pledged Blade is from Bridal Arboro, who is on the Double Special Heroes banner right now. In terms of defensive skills, besides the usual quicker post, there's a lot of options. Fortress Defense and Res 3 is always fun if you like big defense and res numbers, and Nemesis could make use of any combination of stance, bond, form, or the new unity A skills. Feel free to slot in the resistance versions as well. If you want to take advantage of his 39 base attack, then there's nothing wrong with the simple brave sword plus double death blow setup. Add in low attack and defense for even more damage. Now, last actual thing I want to mention is another use for the Dark Creator Sword. I think it can make Nemesis an interesting initiator if you give him an impact skill. That follow prevention is great since he's so slow, but if that gets cancelled, you still either get an extra plus in defense or resistance. Add on the 30 or 40% damage reduction from Dark Creator Sword and well, I think the guy can definitely survive a lot while diving in. This is more of a suicidal build for a defense team, but you can give Nemesis things like lunge or one or two savage blow skills to mess up an enemy formation. If you can keep him alive on the enemy phase, then that would be great, and I think a deflect magic sacred seal would be a nice complement to really prevent a one round KO. As annoying as it may be, I always appreciate those weird non-standard builds on defense teams. It's a bit less depressing than running into Legendary Azura and Krom for the hundredth time. So, should you promote Nemesis to 5 stars? Well, stat-wise, this guy is very different from the usual fast sword in between. He's very slow, but 39 base attack is fantastic, and 37 defense and 34 resistance is just a great balance. Nemesis is basically an infantry unit with a typical armor stat line. As for his skills, well, we mainly only care about Dark Creator's Sword. This weapon is incredibly strong when fully active, but it requires multiple allies to have more than 90% HP. Additionally, its damage reduction ability only works once per phase, which means Nemesis is best when fighting one enemy at a time. The reward is quite high though, since Nemesis can get up to plus 6 attack and defense, which is already his best stance, and then a potential 45% damage reduction is just crazy good on an already tanky unit. The main issue is that Dark Creator Sword's full potential is limited by Nemesis' teammates. Initially, everyone starts at full health, so easy peasy, we already fulfilled the conditions. This is quite strong for a mode like Arena, but for really tough PvE content, keeping everyone at near full health all the time can become problematic. You don't really want to use Nemesis with a Fury user or a Sweeper that's going to abuse Desperation on low HP. Any chip damage from things like Savage Blow, an enemy Duma, or a Bolt Tower can immediately screw up Dark Creator's Sword. There is also the fact that the damage reduction ability only works once per phase, whereas Brave Ike's God Tier Irvin works all day long. Honestly, the main thing to keep track of in general situations is to try and get Nemesis to be the first one to fight. If he can fulfill his job early on, then the rest of his team's HP levels don't matter. Even if he loses one stack, I think plus 4 attack and defense and 30% damage reduction is good enough, depending on the type of build you're using. For the most part, I think Dark Creator Sword isn't as stifling to use since it's literally fully powered up at the start of the fight. It just depends on if you need Nemesis to continue fighting over and over, and if his allies aren't losing health before he finishes his job. For a reward unit, I would say Nemesis is pretty amazing, all things considered. He's probably not going to be a godly tank like Brave Ike, but he should still be very sturdy with a fully active Dark Creator Sword. I think he has some neat potential since 45% damage reduction on a 37 defense and 34 res unit is just kinda nuts anyway. With max investment and merges, he's going to be plenty tanky regardless. Maybe you can toss in some speed increasing skills or buffs to at least not get doubled by everything out there. That's going to be it for this video. Do leave your own thoughts or build ideas in the comments to share with everyone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.